Hi, this is a special episode of Ask Dr. Ben. Uh, we've been getting lots of people writing in uh, about the new YouTube sensation, um, yeah, called Plandemic. And uh, just asking, what do you think about this? Have you seen this? And so I sat down, I watched this thing, and oh my gosh, this is some hot poisonous garbage in my professional <laughs> scientific opinion. But let's go through why. And it's like, it's just transparently easy things to solve and sort out. And they just get so mishandled. And you got these damaged person at the center of it. That, oh, yeah. All right. We'll, we'll get to it. Um, so first of all, the uh, person uh, um, uh, at the center of this is a is what I would call an immunologist. Uh, it seems pretty knowledgeable about um, immunology. Is able to throw around those words. Does not seem to have much of a clue when it comes to molecular virology. Um, and so it's yeah a, a little bit of that Dunning Kruger effect by the look of it. Um, this is a person that came into the field of virology around the time when it was starting to go to starting to split into molecular virology and the old school sort of pathogenesis, like people that care what are the exact parts of the virus and how do they work. And I'm, I'm more from that side. And people who say it doesn't really matter what the parts are and how they work. What matters is what disease does it cause and how does that happen? Um, you know, yeah, do you get a fever? How high is the fever? And eventually what you've seen is that these two have kind of come back together because, yeah, the answers to everything in biology are basically molecular. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing here basing on, based on what I can see, I think she did not make the transition to the molecular age gracefully. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a nice way to say it. So as I go through this, I'm going to try to avoid saying the words like bad, stupid, and wrong. I'm, I'm going to try not to say that. Um, but yeah, thoughts like that may have gone through my mind at uh, several points during this. Um, okay, so she's famous for this thing where she said she's working in the lab, she's got people around her, and they figure out that all these different cell lines are contaminated. Um, and um, other people in other labs are checking because uh, they've heard what she's saying. They're saying, no, they're, they're not contaminated. They don't have this thing. She's saying, yes, all of them are. Every single one that I've got is contaminated. Turns out, <laughs> later they figure out that somebody just messed up with all the cells in her lab and they had all been contaminated with this particular thing and that the cells in general were not contaminated. And basically this entire elaborate house of cards, that's my little pyramid shaped house of cards that was built around that just crumbled. And then one thing leads to another. Uh, she does not take that well because essentially when you're a scientist, your job is to figure out what's right and publish it and then move on to the next thing. But occasionally in science, you get caught up with, um, you know, you actually do something that people care about or that is important to people. And so you're going to get brought into the media. And when that happens, there's a lot of scrutiny because all of a sudden, if you're wrong, you're going to be very publicly wrong. And that's exactly what happened. She actually went back and um, did another paper not too long after that and retested all of the cell lines, but from different labs and not in that contaminated environment. And it turns out that, uh, yeah, she published that none of them were contaminated and that that should kind of be the last word uh, on that. Yeah, which is, oh, yeah, all right. But then around this time, uh, um, apparently there was some friction with bosses and I uh, got fired from her position, or at least non-renewed to her position. It's a cutthroat world out there in uh, high-end science in some places. Some places are kind of relaxed and, uh, I, I don't know, uh, enlightened. And other places are very doggy dog and there's another dog waiting behind that would like to eat you. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to say, go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, around the time she loses her university and science family, she's embraced by the anti-vaccine uh, and basically nonsense family. And yeah, they honestly, it looks like they're using her. It's yeah, I, she may be willing to do this, but it just looks like abuse of a person that is mentally damaged, honestly. 
Um, so they trot her out and get her to talk at all these conferences, get her to make this uh, movie, which if we're saying nice things about it, it is very slickly produced and very, you know, very much like a good TV show. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Except that it's uh, fiction, which a lot of TV shows are, so that's okay. Um, so her latest contention, like the big thing that, like, why are we talking about this now, is that in addition to having a real, <laughs> real visible grudge against various people that she's worked with or been in the same field with, and yeah, these, these grudges happen because some people are jerks, even if they have PhDs. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, mm, uh, let's see. Uh, so the contention is that way back in, I think, 2012, there were, um, they started making vaccines in um, a kind of cell culture called an MDCK cell. It's a uh, dog-derived cell culture line, and it's really good for growing um, lots of different types of the flu virus. It's a thing that when I was working with flu, we used that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> MDCKs. And so the idea was that all the MDCKs were now contaminated, which, yeah, all right, you hear the same theme again. I'm like, okay, yeah. And um, that the contaminated MDCKs had a mystery and possibly even magic coronavirus in them from dogs and that this is now spread in Italy for however many years <laughs> and uh, now we call it SARS-2 and all this is just nonsense there's no there's no molecular data to back any of this up you would have sequences of this thing and there would be a lot of tests you could do that would show whether something like this was right and she's not even doing the tests she's not yeah, it's, it's, it's just made up at this point, and it's nonsense, and it's the kind of nonsense that's going to get people fired up and ugh, make them do stupid stuff. Yeah, so I don't like it. <laughs> uh, anyway, though, um, yeah, if we were to go through this dumb conclusion, um, so why why is this not right? Well, all right. So we know that SARS coronavirus 2 is related to a whole bunch of other, you know, very similar viruses that all come from bats and are all found over in Asia and um, a little part of Africa, uh, Kenya. There was a study there um, uh, and so far nowhere else. And uh, it's totally unrelated to the canine coronavirus, which we know about a canine coronavirus. Dogs can get coronaviruses but it's totally different. They're in the alpha coronavirus group and SARS is in the beta coronavirus group. And these things have differed um, for thousands and thousands of years. It's hard to say exactly how many because they reproduce really quickly and make a lot of mistakes. And uh, viruses are essentially little evolution engines. They just, they go and they go so fast that they break most of our tools for trying to answer questions like this. But a long time at the very least. Um, well, the other the other thing that throws me off here is that we know now that uh, this virus grows really well in humans, a tiny bit in cat cells, not at all in dogs, uh, rather a tiny bit in cats, but um, not very well at all in dogs. Uh, there was one case where they tried to experimentally infect dogs, and they tried on a whole bunch of them, and they got one dog to have a tiny amount of detectable virus in its intestine, and that was only for like a day and then it went away. So for a virus of dogs to now all of a sudden not work in dogs was, uh, yeah, it should be waving a little red flag in the background saying something's, yeah, some, somebody messed up here. Um, and if this is true, and so it's based on the idea of like, that viruses don't really exist when they do. They've got genes and they're all arranged in a little line and there are particular genes in particular places. This is what molecular biology is. This is what uh, we understand. This is how we can approach the virus. It's, it's just got all these parts and you can understand each of the parts. Yeah. And then together, somehow, the parts are contributing to cause disease by interacting with all the moving parts in the immune system. It's a horribly complicated problem, but people are making real headway on solving this. Um, yeah, just, just not like this. Um, and so anyway, so if if this was true, this idea that all dogs and all dog cells contain all viruses that they could catch, including different undescribed viruses, then owning a dog would be suicide. <laughs> yeah. And it's not. Dogs are, I don't know, yeah, goofy like our little one out there, but uh, they're not, yeah, they're not bent on world destruction. Uh, nobody is. This is just... 
it's bad science and uh yeah it's it's stupid and wrong too i know i wasn't gonna say those words but yeah that's where it is so all right at least you know at least we haven't left this hanging there at least we've dealt with this thing right sorry this is such a long video it's only half as long no like a third as long yeah as that uh, piece of garbage <laughs> on youtube but uh yeah my goodness yeah just be careful where you get your information because uh there's so much junk out there and yeah if it sounds too good to be true, it's it's not true, usually. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>